Hi, my name is Megan, and this is a Naughty Mess Knitting Podcast. Hi, everybody. Happy Thursday for me, um, and this will get released on Friday, as usual. It is Thursday the 29th um, of September. Is that true? I think so. Um, <clears throat> it's been a really long day for me. It is after my work day today instead of filming in the morning, I had to get on a 6 a.m. call. So fun. Having a team that's all over the place, but they were all, most of them gathered on the East Coast today and I joined from here. So I got up very early. So hopefully I make sense while I'm talking today, <laughs> but I'm sorry if not. I do have my very own home brewed. It's in the Starbucks cup, but it's like a reusable one. Um, this is a high lady, which I was introduced to from Red Door Fiber Studios, who posted like a lot of stories about it. Like when pumpkin spice came out, I guess also apple brown sugar syrup or something at Starbucks comes out. Anyway, it's a dirty chai with oat milk, apple brown sugar, like syrup in it. And we, I put like, I have a homemade apple syrup. I put a little bit of vanilla. So it's not actually very sweet. It's just like maybe a half pump of each of, each of those plus actual chai tea, like steeped, not the chai mix, <laughs> oat milk and espresso. So it's like my own version, but it's so good. Um, very fall-like. And even though it's late in the day, I need this to stay up and awake through baby bedtime at least. I'll be fine. Um, plus it's like such a fun little fall cup. Okay. Let's get to it. Um, we have a lot to discuss. <laughs> I have four finished objects. I don't know where that came from, but I do have them. Um, I have still so many whips and a couple new cast-ons and no acquisitions this week, but I am going to talk about an acquisition I got this summer because we're going to use some of this yarn like this Sunday. I'm going to cast on something, which is an arbitrary day, but something the knitting group decided <laughs> we're going to start a project on October 1st. Um, yeah, so let's get started. The first things first is what I'm wearing, which is also this week's finished object number one. Um, the skyline, it's done, everybody. Woohoo! Okay, I will stand up. I am like really close to the shelf today, so bear with me. Okay, um, whoop, here we are. It's got, so this is 54 inches eye block to measurements. It is really truly 54 inches across. Um, I think I added about about an inch to the body before blocking. I was just, um, I didn't want it to be like super cropped and you can kind of see, I'll put a picture of me. I just took some outside. Like it hits me right at my hips, like right at the middle of my hips, which is fine with me. The drop shoulder is nice. There's still tons of room in the arm. Um, that beautiful little ridge that goes all the way down. You can see it. It opened up with blocking and it's just like such a pretty little detail. Um, yeah, the, the neckline is super nice. Like how you picked up your increases. Yeah, your increases. Um, yeah, and the shoulders look great. Oh, I like it. I, um, I like it more than I thought I would because I, you know, hated making it. I loved the pattern. I just didn't like the yarn. Okay, so this is on me today, next to skin, no tank top underneath. Just me and my bra and the shirt. I want it to see, this is the first time I'm wearing it. I like washed it on Monday, um, took pictures just now. And I mean, it took like a long time to dry also. It's wet here. And like even inside the house, just took forever. Uh, so I just wanted to see, you know, what it, what it was like to wear it. I'll kind of give the judgment maybe at the end. Um, so far, not at all itchy. So even though it was like kind of crunchy to feel, it did soften up when I wash it and I did let it soak for like an hour and a half, I think at least. Like I put it in before a meeting and then I got it out like middle of my morning on Monday. Um, it's, yeah, it feels, 
nice. It smells good. That wool wash is so nice. Um, but yeah, like I think I'll let you know. Let me just wear it for an hour and I can I can tell you if it's getting pokey or anything like that. Um, so let's go through some quick details on this. So we all remember this is the Skyline Pullover by Tori Yu, who is Tori Knits NYC on Instagram. Um, and this is in testing still. So the test is not due until October 12th. That's what I have here. Um, I think she usually releases like right after because hopefully people are giving feedback before that. I have not seen any kind of like, we haven't even had any pattern updates. There's like one or two things that were grammatical that I think I saw sent in and that was really it. Um, so this is a top down saddle shoulder. You guys saw me make this from the itty bitty saddles all the way to the end, but um, saddle shoulder construction uh, drop shoulder sweater. Um, it is supposed to have eight to 10 inches of ease. That's the recommendation. And on me, um, this is seven, seven. So, I mean that I feel like that's big. So like when I say I pick sizes that are a little closer to my chest again, cause like, I mean, I know that's sort of a look, but like, I don't, I don't know. Like it's not my absolute favorite to have it like really big. Like this is, this is about as big as I'd want to go just saying. Um, this is the size five though, 54 inch bust. Um, I used 3.75 millimeter needles. The recommended needle size is four millimeters. I am using a discontinued yarn from Hobby called Zafira, which is a blown tube construction. Um, 55% cotton, 27% wool, 18% acrylic, uh, in the color dark pines. It is a worsted weight. This is supposed to be like a DK weight. The yardage on this would make you think it's a DK weight or like even lighter. Um, it's 164 yards for 50 grams, but it just is that blown tube. It makes it puffy. Um, it's lofty. I was watching JP Knits things, her, uh, YouTube channel, and they were talking about yarn, different yarn types. Um, I went all the way back to the beginning that's on her current, uh, channel, which I'll, I'll post here. Um, and it's, yeah, it's definitely a lofty yarn. It's airy. And so it takes up more space than you would think. Um, it does give it kind of nice structure, but the drape is still nice. Like the, the blown tube is cause it's, I thought it'd be stiffer, but once I washed it, like that's nice. That's not like stiff and weird. Um, so I'm done. I will get my final notes to Tori. I think she sent a form like last just last week. So I will get her notes. Um, I already took some pictures just before this. And so then I'm done and that's the end of a test. And that's like the best thing. So I only have one test on my needles. Can you believe it? <laughs> I can't either. Um, I don't know the last time I had one test on my needles. Like it's been a long time. I'm glad though. I have so many projects in my queue patterns I've purchased with yarn, you know, like in conjunction with yarn. So I had that intention and then I just keep picking up things I didn't have plans for and no, no. So Rebecca Cloud just put out a new ta uh, test call for like earlier this week, I think for her Daft Days cardigan, which is very cute advent pattern. And I love that she's doing like a tested advent pattern before, you know, the season. And I was like, I can't, I have minis. I definitely have yarn. I could do it. And I was like, you know what? I'm tackling my very first cardigan right now. I don't need to add that with the stress timeline, even though she gives pretty good timelines. I was like, no, no, stay in your lane. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. Um, okay. So let's talk about my other finished objects. Oh, before I go there, I wanted to bring these up because I said I was going to talk about them and I wore them. I remembered. So these are little skeins of yarn. Oh my God. How cute are they? I can't even get closer. Can you see them? Ah! <gasps> They're so cute. <laughs> those are from Sunrise Grove. That's actually like the first thing I think I saw on her Etsy page. And I was like, must have those. Um, and then I got some tools and I have some of those progress keepers that I'm using. So if you want like yarn earrings, I say you should get them. I have definitely worn them around. Um, I don't think it's too much to wear yarn and a yarn thing that you made. I think that is just loving your hobby extra. So I finished my basic rib. These look so little. My basic ribbed socks. 
done. I left, um, I didn't block these because I don't really block my socks. That's how I live my life. I wash them. So I will wash it eventually. Like, I don't think it'll change the fit that much between like wearing them a couple times and then washing them. Um, they fit fine. They are like a tiny bit short. So this was an interesting pattern. I will like, I would like to talk about them in a sec in the pattern in a second, but, um, this is called the basic rib sock, which let me just tell you something. I think that's what it's called on Ravelry. That's also what I named my project in my projects page on Ravelry. The pattern itself has like a different name. I'm not really sure. And then like, if you look at the very top name of the document, that's also a different name. I don't know, but we're going to call them the basic rib socks. Um, they are by Kate Atherley and she is Kate Atherley Knits on Instagram. Um, it is just a very basic three by one rib. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. Like go check it out if you want to try a ribbed sock. I've never made just a ribbed sock. So I thought that would be a good fun thing. Not quite vanilla, vanilla sock to make. Um, so three by one rib the whole way down. Then you do an interesting heel uh and toe and so this is a size medium no sorry I did I think this is what I said last week but it's wrong I looked at it again it's a size small but it goes up to a women's nine and a half foot and it fits my foot fine it is 64 stitches around um and I did it on 2.25 millimeters and I don't know if that's the right size I I think it might say like 2.5 or 2.25 to get gauge something like that um so this is my you I think this is maybe only the second time <laughs> this whole year that I've actually finished my farmer's daughter fiber sock squad in the month you have until the 7th to finish them and post them into the Ravelry group to get entered for prizes but like I'm always finishing them on like sometime between the 2nd and the 7th <laughs> go me. It is not even the end of September. And I finished them today. During my many, many hours of meetings, I just had the toes to do. And so that's what I did. Um, they look great. The color is outstanding. I think, I think the color is gorgeous. Um, it is milkweed. Milkweed is the color. It is, so it's Farmer Daughter Fiber Sock Squad, and this one is their Highwood Sock. The way they did it this year um, is that there are three bases only that they're using for all of their socks, so Rocky Mountain Pearls, Highwood Sock, and Pintler. And so they did that on purpose so that at the end of the year, if you didn't use your skeins, there'd be, like, at least coordinating bases that you could, like, use in a, in, in a single project. Um they're all like relatively similar like weight as far as uh I think two of them this one and the Rocky Mountain Pearls are both 400 yards for 100 grams and they're two ply so like they feel very similar this one though is 80 percent merino and 20 percent nylon and I love it I mean I love a two ply for socks especially I think it wears really well it pills a little bit less um and it's easy to work with I don't find it splitty so like I just, yeah, I have a good time. Um, yeah, so they look kind of little, partly because of the toe. I measured them before I put them on, and they should have been, like, good for me. I usually do about nine inches from, like, foot uh, heel turn to toe for my foot, which is about 10 inches long. Um, and that just gives me, like, a good amount of ease. And they fit fine. I think part of it is the heel construction. So let's just talk about these socks really fast. Um, I have only been making socks like sweaters for two and something years. Um, I have made a lot of socks though, and I've made a lot of socks this year. Um, and I have yet to repeat a pattern. So I have tried all of the types of socks. Um, there are some heel constructions I still haven't done, or I like like a fish lips kiss or whatever that weird one is. I did that in a stocking one. So I understand the mechanics of it, but I haven't done it in like a sock that you wear. Um, but I, I thought it was interesting. Let's just like look at this closely. Uh, do I have other socks? I don't think I have any others in. Oh, you know what? No, I don't have any in my office because I always have socks in here because my feet are cold all the time. Uh, okay um but instead of doing like a ribbed gusset it's just plain knit and then you can kind of see here this is like 
an odd heel turn. Like it's, um, so what she did, it's really a cap. And like, I have a wide foot. It still fits okay, but it's a little bit odd. It, it's got like rigid lines almost. So even when you stretch it. So the way that she did it, instead of doing, um, when you're doing the heel turn, normally you will like go up until your stitches that are left and you purl two together, one that's the last one on your right needle, the first one on your left, and then you pick up another one, you know, and same when you, when you're doing the knit way, you, you kind of knit two. So you, you make like a more gradual cup. This one, you don't knit, two, you don't do that like extra knit stitch. So you just purl two together. So you get this sort of rigid line as you're picking them up. It means that you have less stitches on your heel after the heel turn, which is nice because the gusset was shorter. Um, but it's like, an, I mean, I didn't like, I, I tried them on and it doesn't feel odd, um, but it does feel like a little bit more like dramatic of a cup, if that makes any sense. Anyway, just talking about these socks, uh, but I thought it was interesting. I mean, I'd love to try something new. It's not super odd and it doesn't fit weird. So I think it's like something to keep in your back pocket, especially because everybody, just like your body is different, your feet are really different. Like having a high arch really affects certain, like I have a pretty high arch. So it affects the way certain socks like fit my foot when they have, they're just, you know, these are not store-bought socks. They don't have the same kind of like ease as a Lycra sock, you know, a, a cotton sock with Lycra. So like it's, it's very, it can like really affect, especially for me getting it over my heel. So, um, it's always interesting to, to try something new. Um, but I do like the, the ribbed pattern was like just so nice and kind of relaxing and it's got like a lot of stretch. Doesn't have any cuff difference, you know, no difference in the cuff. It's just that, but, um, these were top down. If you want to try them, the link will be below. So that is finished object number two. Um, and then, <laughs> Okay, so I didn't wash these, and technically, I normally wouldn't consider that done, done. For me, it's like blocked, ends cut, and any other things you need to do. Um, but I don't know that I want to wash them. I may, I may not. I just, maybe you guys have an opinion. I don't know if that's going to make a ton of difference in the fabric. Um, but I... I may do it. I I will decide later today, but I just finished the smaller one today. Um, and I wanted to show you and I will put tags on them. I have like, um, little faux leather tags that have a naughty mess on them that I got like several years ago when I was making a lot of hats and giving them to family, etc. just to have my brand out there. And also because I had the Etsy shop, which still exists and I really need to take down, but still it's out there. And so I have, tags and I will put them on even though it's just for me. So this is a Manhattan hat by Tori Yu. By Tori Yu. Obviously a little love for Tori today. Um, I just, it's a really cool style. I actually was nervous. I, I knew this is like, I got this yarn. This is a back loop yarn co in the color poison. It's her classic or her simple worsted, that's what it's called. Um, and it's 100% superwash merino and it's 218 yards for 100 grams. This was, I don't think it's available anymore. I got this in her August sale. Um, and this is like a fall last year colorway, I think. And I, it's like still in all this neon stuff. And I knew I wanted like another bright hat. Um, because I know I'm going to make a bright pink hat this year, but green is my vibe a lot. Um, so I'm going to put it on so you can see, but I wasn't sure if I would like, like this little bloop at the top. Um, but I kind of love it. I think it's so fun. <laughs> Does it make you excited? Like I cannot wait to go walk in the neighborhood, which has been particularly gloomy the last week. And like, it's not actually that cold out, but once it gets colder and like wear my hat and walk the dog and be fluorescent, that sounds so fun to me. Um, of course they couldn't just do one. So 
I made baby a hat. Isn't that cute? <laughs> it's a little, you know, this is the child size, I think. Um, I don't know if my tension was a little bit like, I don't know. Um, I'm definitely going to block hers because I need to give myself like a tiny bit more length in it. Um, the cuff is supposed to be a little bit shorter. So this is probably about the right length for it. I will maybe, I haven't decided if I'll put her face on YouTube, but I did take a picture with her today. It was really cute. She's like so precious and she even smiled into the camera, which for her to do for a selfie is like very hit or miss. Um, but yeah, so we have little matching hats and we are going to be baby fashionistas around the neighborhood. So mm -hmm. I love them. Okay, so uh, details, details. I made this adult size large, the biggest size, um, because I have a huge head. <laughs> it's large. Uh, it, it has about like four inches of negative ease. So it's, you know, like it does look smaller than my head for sure. Um, but it has like all that stretch, then you can really see, then you can really see the, the rib. It is just the all, I mean, it's the longest cuff known to man, right? That's essentially what you're doing forever and ever and ever. And I only did the single fold. And if I use this pattern for my fingering weight one, which I think sport weight is the smallest weight she has, but honestly, like the 400 yards for 100 grams, I could probably get away with it. Like maybe you just adding four more stitches and yeah, whatever. Um, now that I understand how the pattern's constructed, I could totally do that. But it is so nice. Um, the decreases are very cute. Uh, that little, the little bloop, it's cute. Um, the one modification I did make is that I did a different kind of, um, bind off Kitchener. So, um, because you end with like a certain number of ribbed stitches, uh, and it's an even number. So I don't know, it's like nine and nine or eight and eight or something like that. Um, but because you end with that, if you do just a, Kitchener across you will Kitchener's by nature are like lopsided right so you won't actually be aligned to your knit stitch on the other side you would be like one off or half a stitch off it's what the pattern is I mean it is just a Kitchener you can keep it as easy as that um I like to make my life difficult so I looked up like is there another way to do this just because I wanted to know uh and yes you can in fact graft in rib so that it looks It, so that it like looks pretty even. I mean, that's right at the edge there. So what you do essentially is put, it was real annoying with this because it was just like a flat fabric. Um, I, but I put the purl stitches on cords inside of the hat and, and then just Kitchener just the knit stitches and then I flip the whole thing out inside out and then their knit stitches there. And then I just Kitchener across those like with the same yarn tail, I just pulled it through and then did that. Um, it was a little bit annoying. I mean, it was very annoying to do, but I think it's worth it. I think that like totally seamless edge is super fun. Um, I did it on the baby hat too, even though hers is, uh, like even it's even less stitches to do it with. And it was annoying, <laughs> baby annoying. Um, but I liked it. Yeah. So here are our little baby Manhattan hats. Okay. Uh, that's all I really have to say about that. I really enjoyed it. That was a great pattern. It's, I mean, it's just simple, but it has such a good effect. Uh, I bought, I bought like her a bundle. So I bought like all the weights because I just knew I was going to love it. Um, and I think it's like, if I do do hats for the kids, the nieces and nephews this year, because their hats are still small, um, I might make them all like the same hat in different colors because it was easy and it's a good meeting hat to just do ribbing forever and ever. Okay, so let's dive right into our whips. Um, this is number one, the only test on the needles, the Ashling by Maddie Mo, who is Momer01 on Instagram. And as a reminder, this is a sweater that is bottom up split hem drop shoulder what else do I have to say about it crew neck made with one 
strand of Surrey throughout the whole thing. So it's light as a cloud. I mean, uh, like, honestly, it feels like there's no yarn here whatsoever, even though there's like a bottom of a sweater. Um, and I am loving it. Uh, it is size... I'm making size five, which is a 48 inch bust. Recommended ease is three to eight inches. I am slightly under that, but don't care. Um, I'm using the recommended needles, which is 3.5 for the body, 3.25 for the ribbing. In um, Back Loop Yarn Co's Surrey Lace in a custom colorway called For Megan. <laughs> No, it's like periwinkle. That's what I asked for. And it is 74% baby Surrey alpaca and 26% silk, 328 yards for 100 grams. And I did grow this like several inches this week. Um, not quite as much as I wanted to, but I broke into my second ball of Surrey and I just, um, it's so, it's so drapey. It's so nice. Um, yeah, we're like, okay, so there's my progress marker from last week. I mean, I had, to add, I added like three inches of body. And like I said before, this is not my desk project. I like, it's a little bit of a slog, I think, to get up, you know, up. There's no bus shaping in this, which I just like, don't even know if you, I mean, yes, of course, you could do bus shaping in a Surrey shirt. It's so drapey. I don't think it's going to matter. It was, it's not necessary, um, especially for the size I pick because it'll like sit very close to my bust and then drape. Um, I mean, I have a good amount of inches on here now, like seven, seven or so. Um, and I think I'm taking like 11 or whatever before I split for sleeves, something like that, maybe a little bit longer. So I'm progressing. I'm definitely putting in some time every week. And this is a long deadline. So this is not due until November 12th. Yeah, that's what I have down. So, like, I have plenty of time to get this done. I don't want to kill myself to, like, push, push, push through to have no tests because, quite frankly, I just keep casting things on and those take my interest <laughs> for the week. Um, like making two hats for no reason other than the fact it was so rainy and I needed something very bright and happy. Um, a lot of my projects are making me bright and like feel bright and happy though. Like this one is so nice to work on. Um, not my desk project because it is not that easy to knit with her Surrey held single. I mean, it's not like the Whitmore's also, I'm going to go back to the body this week. I don't know if it'll be my desk project because it's just like you, if I just feel like you tend to drop Surrey if you are working with it, like held single or double. It's like not the best if you like have no eyes on your work. So, and that's okay. So I don't actually have a desk project right now, which maybe is why I should cast something else on. Food for thought. Um, let's just talk about what I have. There is going to be another cast on. Also not something that's going to be a desk project, but we'll talk about that. So I have two more deadline projects though. So the first one I'm going to go through is the oolong because I made really good progress on that this week and it's not due next. It's actually due third out of all of these. Um, but I will be done with it first, most likely. Because it's a tank top, that helps. Um, but also because I got pretty far. And again, I am loving this project. So I always feel like when I look at it, it doesn't look like it's long enough. Like nothing, no things look like they're nine inches or whatever, but it, it is partly just because the wide versus tall thing. Um, this is wider than it is tall. Uh, this is a sample knit and it is due the end of November. Um, it is the Oolong Tank by Amy Sure, who is Amy Sure makes on Instagram. Um, this is my first and then friendship being the second of Amy Sure patterns to make. And I've always heard really good things. And I've definitely like seen and read some blog posts from her about modifications and other things. So I know she's a very thoughtful designer, which I love. Um, but this is a bottom up lace front v-neck tank top. Um, and I am making for the sample size three, which is not my size, uh, with absolutely no bust shaping. Um, there's like a tiny bit of body shaping, but that's for every size. And uh, the finished circumference is 39 and one quarter inch. Um, I am using the recommended needle size, which is 
let me look at my needles because I don't know. 3.5 millimeters. Um, and the sample is for the yarn dyer. And so this is Horizon Fibers um, Stratus Fingering in Redhead. And Stratus Fingering is a very fun blend. It's 50% alpaca, 25% linen, and 25% silk. And it feels like a dream. And it's beautiful. And it's so drapey. And I love it. So here is my progress. It's so cute. Oh, it's so cute. Look at that lace. Uh even like unblocked, it's cute. Like you can tell it's going to be so great. It's, it's so wrinkly because I was threw it in my bag. It's a little bag that I put it in because it's so light. <laughs> um, I did cake up, cake up my second skein. I am close to needing it. Like, uh, but I did split for for underarms. Um, you do the front first and then the back, which is great because it, it'll be nice to like continue with the lace, not do all the back and then go back to the lace. Um, I. I think I'm like the row before splitting for the v-neck too so I'll just like very soon start doing lace on one side and lace on another and like that is it is two separate lace panels like you do the same pattern twice with that bloop bloop with this like pearl line in the middle so I think you drop like there's three pearls in a row and one at the end of each lace chart and one single in the middle. So I think you like drop that last one and that's your start of your V. I think so. Um, so I'm like so excited. Great progress and such a lovely pattern. Um, I'll talk more about the construction when I get to the hard part because honestly, doing a doing a um hem and body is just a tube. So so far, so good. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's been, it's been like really pleasant. I said this before, but the lace chart is just like, it's pretty simple. It's only six lace rows. So it's 12 rows total, but like only six rows of charted pattern. And I definitely like don't have it memorized because you kind of do a couple of weird stitches, but it is not hard. Um, and like once you're going through, you're like, oh, okay. Like I gotta, you know, the counts make a lot of sense. So enjoying that a lot. Um, my next sample was one that I didn't even have. I talked about the yarn last week. I did not have it cast on and I certainly made some progress here. So this is a Phaedra by Audrey Borrego, who is Yarn Flakes on Instagram and on YouTube. Um, this is a sample for Back Loop Yarn Co. Uh, and it's due mid-November the 17th. I have to get it in the mail. Um, I am making a size two and... I'm using Back Loop Yarn Co. for both of these. Uh, her basic sock, which is 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon, 400 yards for 100 grams, and Surrey Lace, which is the same as the Ashling, 74% um, Surrey Baby Surrey Alpaca, 26% silk, 328 yards for 100 grams. This combo is killer. I mean, the color is amazing. So it's in one of her new fall colorways, which is called Ghouls. It is like, it's a dreamy color, like super dreamy. So I'll show you that now that it's like all knit up. I still feel like I need to show you like the cake of it too, because the color is like wild. Um, anyway, so this is a bottom up split hem, drop shoulder, cable and bobble front paneled sweater. It has an all over dot motif and that includes the sleeves there's no cable on the sleeves which last week I like could not remember because I hadn't started it yet and until you like start it I mean it's it's anyone's guess <laughs> um no so it has this uh it's called a dot stitch or a dot motif which just means that like um there's like a brick pattern but they're pretty far apart of like pearl stitches just in the main knit fabric and then so it's like every eighth row or something is is has a pearl every few stitches um so it makes like a it, it does it does give a little bit of visual interest without like being busy for the back of this sweater that is busy on the front because the cable panel is huge let's look at it um here we go I gotta pull this yarn over so I don't pull the stitches. Um, okay, so I have done a few rows of the chart, which I don't even know. You can kind of see it here. Um, I did both hems this week. This is the back hem. 
and this is the front. So just like the Ashling, the front is slightly shorter than the back. Um, and here is, here is our very few rows in pattern, which you can see, this is awkward to hold. Um, my first bobble stitches, there's like a bobble in row one. I mean, this is not messing about. Uh, it's not so bad. The bobble, I actually kind of like the construction of these bobbles because you don't have to like, go back. Um, they consolidate within the stitch. They're not super hard to make. I mean, any bobble is annoying. I don't care who tells you otherwise. Like, it's not the most fun stitch that was ever invented. They do have a nice effect, though. So, um, so bo more bobbles to ensue. Um, I am, I'm liking it so far. I mean, it's definitely a really long cable chart. I mean, the, it's just charted instructions, which for something this long would be horrible to read across the line anyway. Um, it's fine. I think the effect will be amazing. I think it'll, it'll be nice. Like it's always like cable patterns are mo most fun when you get like at least three or four inches and you can really see what's happening. This one is interesting because it's not just like, oh, here's some cabled lines. Like you are creating like lines through twisted knit stitches. Um, there is some right twist stitches. Like I think that there's kind of like a this motif in there. Um, the bobbles are in there. It's, it's a lot. There's a lot going on. So we'll see. Um, and I don't think that you would be able to see the dot motif at all because the very first dot line is like right above the ribbing. But I think it'll look also really, really nice. But like just the, like look at the ribbing. I mean, that is so gorgeous. Oh, it's so dreamy gray blue. But do you see how that like looks almost a little bit purple now? But like way more gray up here. It is. It's just, it's like such a versatile color. Okay. Um, loving it. And I think because also it's a small size, I will kill that pretty fast. I don't think like I'm going to get super caught up in it, even though I really have to focus. Um, okay. Let's go through. I may have one more sweater with a deadline, but that's self-imposed. And, uh, um, we can talk about that last because it's our, our friendship sweater, but this is the progress on the Whitmore. Um, Sarah's birthday has come and gone. This is not done. I knew I wasn't going to get it done before her birthday. I, I'm going to really try to get it done in October though. A, I just don't want it to linger on my needles any longer than that. And I would really like to get it in the mail to her. B, um, it's gorgeous. And it's, it's like, I'm going to be just at the body very soon. And I need just a body to like relax and knit also. Um, on occasion. So I did not add any body rows yet again this week, but I did complete one beautiful sleeve, which this again is the Bishop style sleeve. So it's like all of the stitches until, which um, this is how much I had last week. It's a little cute progress keeper. Um, and all of the stitches remain until the last row. And then actually it's kind of fun. You can see this I need to hold it the right direction. Okay, so you can see this um, at the top of the sleeve, like it's they you asymmetrically decrease. So you get rid of the most right at the top of the sleeve. Um, so I think it like doesn't make a pleat, but it almost like just makes the puff a little bit more noticeable right on the top, which is great. Um, and it's like a nice long cuff. God, it's so soft. And this sleeve is done until the cuff. I just did the decreased st stitches and then I really like, I couldn't find my smallest cables last night. It was like a whole thing. I was like, well, this will get done this weekend. Um, and then I'll add some length. And so details, details. This is the Whitmore sweater by Amy Loudon, who is Taylor S Studio on Instagram. It is a top down circular yoke lace lace pattern um sweater i am making the size small which is a 41 and a half inch bust uh the recommended ease is five inches this is for my best friend not for me um i am using the recommended needles which is four millimeters for the body and three millimeters for the ribbing uh this is woolberry berry merino oh berry natural 
don't listen to me. It's been a long day. Um, it is 100% non-superwash, 20.5 micron merino in 400 yards for 100 grams. And Berry Surrey, which is the old Berry Surrey, 74% uh, Surrey alpaca, 26% silk, 328 yards for 50 grams. So it's the same um, composition as the one from Back Loop. And I will say they feel very, very similar. I mean, like, I, these two sweaters, the Phaedra and the Whitmore are like the exact same construction. So they should be like the same density. They should feel pretty much the same. Um, the Woolberry is a natural non-superwash though. It's the softest non-superwash. Like there's, um, there's really no way to tell. I mean, durability, maybe that like, maybe there's more elasticity because of the nylon. I don't even know. Um, I can't tell a difference, but they are like that same plumpness and yeah. It's really nice. Uh, the color is like so pretty. I'm like obsessed with it. I brought it to Knit Night and I was like, you guys, it's the yarn that brought us all together. <laughs> um, which I thought was, you know, maybe just only funny to me, but it really is. It's always going to have a sentimental place, even though I am uh, pushing it right out my door. Um, but to my very, like, she's my favorite person, um, other than my immediate family, who are my favorite people. Uh, she is my immediate family. Uh, we very much think of each other as sisters. That's how we treat each other. Her parents are, like, my pseudo-parents. Her brother calls me sis. So, all of those things. Um, now, this is the last... Nope, not last sweater. This is the last pullover on my needles. Okay, so here is progress on my friendship pullover. I, well, I'm going to give details first on this one. So, um, this is the friendship pullover by Amy Sure, who is again, Amy Sure makes on Instagram. It is a bottom up cable front panel raglan sweater, uh, meaning you do like compound raglan to, to finish after you get to your divide for front and back. Um, I'm making the size E, which is like an extra large, but it's 50.25 inches. I didn't put the recommended ease for this one, but I think it's like oh, fairly large, like six to eight inches or something. I'll put it here. Um, I am using more Back Loop Yarn Co. yarn uh, in Basic Worsted again, which is the same as that, those Manhattan hats. Um, and it's 218 yards for 100 grams, 100% superwash merino in the color Dreamland 2.0, which is another specially formulated, formulated for me yarn of all the custom colors from Erin and it's it's so fun okay you guys I made a lot of progress and I love it I'm like so obsessed okay let me not drop any stitches I don't have stoppers on this one okay <gasps> it's so cute it's seriously so cute um you can see uh oh you only get the yarn okay you can see the cable looks so fun I'm into my second repeat so that's our like right here um I did my bust starts which is kind of why you can see like it it's sort of like flaring a little bit right there um I didn't think that would be long enough to the, do the bust starts I mean I I'm like on measurement for everything I'm on gauge and I was like I do them now are you sure? But this is supposed to be slightly cropped. I don't think it will be like very cropped on me. I definitely think that the Superwash Merino will also grow a little bit more than like Amy's. I did not wash my swatch. It's a topic for another day. Do I wash my swatches? Not usually. I know you're supposed to. At least I swatch. So, um, and it's just for me project. I mean, I didn't, I didn't like treat it extra special, but it's so cute. Um, I am like really obsessed. I love it. So I only have like, I don't know, three or f three inches or so until I get to split for sleeves. So I'm like right at the, at the boob, maybe a little bit, even less than that. I'd have to look. Uh, I just like took a break from, from cables because I was working on the Phaedra. I also don't know. So I am using my because I did the hem and then the body and I just used my interchangeables on a long cord chow goose. I love my chow goose. I just like, I love the tip of them. I love the feel of 
like how the yarn slides on them. I mean, the tip is like extra pointy. <sighs> Doing the cable and like the weight of the sweater now, it's like kind of bothering my hands because these are shorties. So this is the longer of the shorties and so it's like three inches long. I think I need like a four or a five inch needle though. Like there's no reason for me to have a short needle right now. I don't have like a, the regular set of chow goos. I only have the shorties. So I think I'm going to have to sadly just put them on my Knit Picks needles. I have many sets of Knit Picks needles. Um, and this is a 4.5 millimeters for the body. I don't know what, I think that the, I think the hem was like 3.75 don't quote me on that. I'll put it in the box. I'm sure it's already been been on the screen and gone now. Um, but yeah, I yeah, I need to change them. That was like the other reason I stopped the other day because I feel like with the weight I was like shifting my hands like a lot and I was kind of like giving myself a hand cramp for zero reason because I can just put them on bigger needles. I like to pay attention to my my hand health. So I am going to switch those over. Um, but I did put on my beautiful, absolutely gorgeous, hello, lavender stitch marker on here. So I just made so much progress. Wow. Um, and I am going to keep that one on here because this was released at Flock. This is like when Ariel and I decided to make it and so exciting. So in case you don't know or don't remember, Ariel and I are doing the most casual of all knit alongs, as in we are knitting this together. And we are talking about it each week on our podcast. And we are going to try to finish at the same time. And we are going to take pictures together. And we're hoping some of you are also making it with us and going to take pictures and send them to us. Oh, to note, please, our hashtag is PKW Friendship K-A-L. It is not showing up on Instagram. Not because there aren't a couple people who have posted, um, but because there's like not enough and the new way that Instagram tags work is like there has to be a volume before they show up, which is very dumb. I mean, like, why would they do that? It's annoying. So um, if you do put something out there, a story or a, a grid post with your yarn choice or your swatch or your progress to date on your friendship pullover and you want us to see, please tag Ariel and or I in it. Both of us, one of us, doesn't matter. Um, we'll repost then, but I can't like see anything in the tag yet. So that's disappointing. And it's all Instagram's fault. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so I still hope some of you are joining and if you are like comment below and I'll also like go find your Instagram page and stuff. Um, I will say, um, I got to knit night on Tuesday and Sylvan whipped out a fully finished friendship pullover that she started the week before, like after knit night. I told you I had knit, we, we knit fluence someone in our group to do it. I didn't think she'd be finished before literally anybody, um, but that's how Sylvan rolls, and I love her for it. She made this gorgeous, gorgeous um, burgundy color. Burgundy? It's like maroon. I don't know. I, those are really not different colors, but it doesn't feel so purpley as, as burgundy f feels in my brain. <laughs> You guys, I really must be tired. Um, anyway, it is, yeah, a really nice kind of maroony color um the cables look gorgeous in the color she modified the neckline even more than just the two options in the pattern and did an eye cord bind off I don't know if she kept it but that's what she did during knit night was her neckline and it looks it looks great um it does like keep it more open um and it's just like it's so cute it's so cute on I can't wait to see it like when it's blocked for her she'll take pictures with us too so you'll see that one I'm sure um and I have one more work in progress. So I don't have my Farmer's Daughter Fibers October yarn yet, which I wouldn't show you, I guess, because, well, you know, it's almost the end of the month. Uh, but it should be here like tomorrow. And that's exciting. So I will have that yarn to talk about next week. Um, and I'll have to pick a new sock pattern. But as of today, I only, I don't have any socks on my needles, which is bizarre um so here is what I said I would cast on and I'm doing it it's my first ever knit cardigan the leaf cardigan this is the leaf cardigan by Rebecca Clow 
you can see all of my pro progress. Woohoo, major, major. Um, just winding the yarn and getting ready and like making my little chart. That was enough work for me. Um, I did, you know, I started, you can see my very first of my intarsia. This is like looking weird right now and bubbly because of the ribbing. Like the ribbing is, is heavier than the regular fabric right now. Um, I did make one modification already because, you know, this is my sweater and I'm going to do what I want. Um, I think she just recommends like a long tail cast on. I've been doing a lot of tubular cast ons. Why would I give myself it like 200 and something stitch tubular cast on? Why not? I guess is the answer. Um, I love the way it looks. I love it. I love it so, so much. It wasn't that crazy. It's not 400 stitches. This is in worsted weight. So I said, you know what? Buckle up, Buttercup. You can do it. And I certainly did. And it looks divine. Look at that. I'm still trying to concentrate on my head. Like, stop. Um, It looks so good. Like, look at that edge. Boop. Totally seamless. Okay. I really do love them. Uh, I use, just in case anyone wants to know, I'll put a link below the Andrea Maori video um to do a tubular cast on straight onto your needles no extra tools needed um I I like I got the rhythm at this point I've done a lot of them just in the recent months um I think that they don't give like a bubbly edge and they're like it's easy it's hard at first to read your stitches I like also in something this long to just count as I go and every like 20 something 20 stitches is usually the number I put on a little marker I get to whatever closest number and then you know it's just like easier math that way um but yeah it's like it's a simple way to do it and it the results are pff, worth it super worth it um I didn't actually write my details for this one yet so I'm gonna wing it I think I'm making a size five which rings true for me um and I'm going to say it's something like a 52 inch bust or something like that. I mean, I'm going to put measurements here. So don't quote me on this really. Uh, and I am going, so this is a bottom up cardigan with intarsia down the back. So this, you know, is going to be my back and this will be like the left side will be yellow, golden, brown, whatever color this is. Um, and the right side will be, which it's called a warm glow. That's what the color is. Um, this side will be the color magic. These are, which is this one, uh, alternating stripes that are off center of each other. Um, so like the solid colors will be like this. And then we'll figure out what I'm doing with sleeves in the future. We'll see how much yarn is left. Uh, these are all Sorella yarns from two different collections from Holidays maybe last year, maybe the year before. Um, it looks like her newish label. So maybe it was just last year. And then this is Mrs. Patmore's Kitchen from the Down Abbey collection, which she re-released this year. So this could have been this year's or the year before's. I think she had them. I think she had more of them. Maybe it was like monthly club. Anyway, um, I love it. Boop, boop. It's got such nice color. It's got some of that gold, some of that purple, some deeper purples. The overall color is like a really light purple. It's not white. Um, live. So yeah, loving it. Um, it is drop shoulder and you do the button band at the end, which I'm like a little bit bummed about, but also like it's fine. Um, I'll learn that te technique. I am going to do like another cardigan this year that is like do it you do it at the same time then I'll make an educated decision on which one I like more and like not just like to do because I'm sure I'm gonna like the one that you just do right away but like what holds up better what feels sturdier which which is nicer for the buttons itself so more to come on that front all right um okay so we have I didn't even say this in the beginning but we have one exciting thing this week and that is my giveaway I will do books after and um oh and one little acquisition thing after the giveaway though because um the acquisition is not from this week so 
I said if I got a thousand YouTube subscribers, I would do a giveaway. I've never even done an Instagram giveaway. I do have a lot of followers on there and like not because I put out really great content or like I should have a lot of followers. <laughs> I have followers because I had one crochet like series of videos but like one video in particular which didn't even have any crochet content I swear to you it was like how to prep for your petal puff petal flower blanket which I did make this puff petal blanket for a friend who had a baby um last September and I made it like early like from September to October actually I probably was working on it longer than that anyway um it was like 300 single petal, puff petal flowers that I put together. One of these videos, like had no content, went viral. And I have no idea how, like the mysteries of Instagram, right? Like just got a bajillion views and a ton of likes. And I got a lot of followers from that. And these people are not crafters, most likely, and unfollow me all the time. So like, it's always fluid. But that is why if you ever wondered, like, why does she have Instagram followers? That's the only reason. One video and so make reels. That's my advice. Um, if you want more, I don't really care. I'm still posting really for me, for my test knits. It is nice if I have some of that reach to other people or like just because more crafters saw it so that they can see like who I'm who I'm testing for and like the yarn people I shout, shout out to because I do want to spread the word the more of my message and what I want to do in this community is just like be a friendly face um and be your virtual yarn buddy so please like that's why I want you guys to tell me what you're making I got a lot of people tell me good good projects on the last video for sure um interact with me reach out to me on Instagram I swear I'm not scary I will respond to you if I see it which I've been doing a pretty good job of checking DMs. Um, I have I have made some friends, some people who have messaged me and I've I've been continuing to chat with and um, from all over, which is so fun. Uh, so yes, the giveaway. I'm going to keep it entirely on YouTube. Instagram is notorious for bots and spam accounts and fake accounts trying to steal people's information. So I just like don't want to go there. I am going to give away a little package, care package for me. So it's going to include a couple of notions and other things. And it's going to include at least two skeins of yarn. And I'm not going to tell you which skeins because I want you to have some say in the matter, um, especially like weight or color palette or whatever. Um, and I will also gift you one pattern on Ravelry. So here is my like little gift to you. It's a it's a little care love package from me. Uh, how do you win? You win by responding to this video um, with a comment below, uh, and I would love for you to share your favorite small batch dyer. So I would like you, the primarily to um, put in dyers that have like less than a thousand in Instagram followers. Um, they can have slightly more than that, you know, but like, I'm not talking, don't put Sorella. She already has tons of love and she's, and Ashley is a wonderful, her whole crew is great, right? I'm not knocking on her, but like, I want to, for, to continue sharing and uplifting our lesser known or newer to the community dyers. So please, um, put their Instagram handle below. If you see them too, and you're putting yours in there, go follow them. Give them some love. That would be so, so great. Um, if you don't have a dyer you know of that you like, um, then you can also put a pattern designer who is small, under a thousand um, followers. And I would really love if they were size inclusive or even if they're just accessories, um, that would be great. And I will take all of those and I will put them in a little number generator and I will pick the winner, which I will announce during the next podcast. So I'm going to do this for two reasons. One, then you will know that you won and you will watch me and I will announce it. And then I will reach out to you after that via DM because there's so many spammy fake accounts, bots, and other things that will try to be me. They all have slightly different spelling and things like that. But like, it's so easy to just click quickly or click a link. I will not ask you for anything but your address and the pattern that you want on Ravelry when I reach out to you. And I'm going to do it, um, you know, 
like I will say your name and then you can put um like I will try to reach out to you if I can. If you don't respond, then please like if you watch the video, I'll I'm going to leave it a couple of weeks. Like I'm not going to just if I don't hear from somebody after several weeks, maybe I'll just like call another name, but um I will do my best to find you. So, put your comments below. I will pick. I will not reach out to you until after this next week's episode uploads. So that's going to be like the 7th or something of October. So that's when you'll know. And I will also like put your name at the top of that box in um in the YouTube like in the show notes. So, we're going to try to keep this less spammy as as least spammy as possible. Um but please like if somebody you think is is impersonating me like reaches out to you like don't respond report it as like as spam like in asking you for like your your credit card address or you know credit card or whatever like I'm not going to ask you for anything I will this is 100% me giving you something um you don't have to cover anything oh but I should say I'm really sorry I'm going to keep this to us in Canada I know I have lovely lovely viewers all over the world but it is so expensive to ship a lot of places right now outside of the US and so um, because I am going to include some extra goodies, I would really love to just do this U.S. and Canada. Um, yes. Okay. Let's go to acquisitions. So what I, I think I said this before that I was going to highlight, you know, like some of the yarn here, especially when I don't have like new acquisitions. Um, I would love to talk about my EKF haul from Explorer Knits and Fibers Summer Market. So every summer, every summer, I think this is the second year they've done it or something. Um, Allie and team dye special colors that are only available in person at their Denver market. After it's over, they do put them on their website. But like the main part of the haul, all of the bases, etc., is only at the summer market. I did not have the chance to go this year, but um, Sylvan, Ariel, and Katie from Pacific Knit West all went and I put in an order with Sylvan. <laughs> She's like my yarny godmother. She's the best. Uh, and seriously brought me home like a lot of skeins. I mean, this was not a small order. Uh, but I did have projects to make. And I think I've said this before. I've never actually made an entire project. I've never made a project with Explorer Knits Yarn. I have only gotten like, when they go on the Discord, they are like snapped up like that. Like it's, they're just gone. Um, especially a sweater quantity. Like it doesn't matter what color, they're, they're instantly gone. So I had lucked into like one or two random skeins. I just hadn't used them for a project yet. Um, this is like Sylvan's favorite. I'm going to just venture and say it's Sylvan's favorite dyer. <laughs> that uh, Allie and team are her favorite. Um, but I, so I asked questions about the bases and like, you know, before purchasing some sweater quantities. Okay, what did I get? I'm going to start with this because I've talked about it several times. So this is, I got Denali sock in In My Neon Era, which is that very popular Barbie pink. It's neon pink and it's gorgeous. Um, Denali sock is 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon, 400 yards for 100 grams. I mean, this is the same base as like Aaron's basic sock. Um, it feels really similar. Like this almost feels like teeny tiny bit softer, which very much could just be like from how she washes it after, um, just like soften it up a little bit more, but it is, uh, going to be a hat. And so this is, I think it's going to be a Tori U hat either way. It might be the, like, I'll probably swatch and see if I can get away with the Manhattan hat light or I will do the brownstone hat, which is like just knit. I don't really know. Like it, I don't think it's ribbed. That's the answer. Um, so I just have one skein of that. The next part I have is Cashmere Cavern sock. And I got um, in the color grapefruit, which is this gorgeous, gorgeous grapefruit color. I mean, it's orange. Is it like my very best color? No, but it's not so bad. It's not so bad. Um, I am going to make, I think, the Plumeria with this, um, which is a Wool and Pines tank top pattern. Um, I got three skeins of this, and uh, this was another Pacific Knit West 
knit along colorway that when we saw this release and we knew the girls were going several of us that didn't go all got this color to do teas and tanks so we have them for next summer i think our intention might be to like have them them done in the spring for like a group picture uh but i am gonna get cracking on this like this will be one of my like mid-winter projects to get ready for next spring um i think i'm settled on the plumeria i definitely have the yardage for it and i just love hopefully i've put a picture here it's like drapey and it's got this beautiful lace at the bottom and it's just like a dream and this yarn is like a dream it feels so soft oh um cashmere caverns did i say this i don't think i did is 80 percent super brush merino 10 percent cashmere 10 percent nylon you know i love that blend it's it's to die for um it's 435 yards and 100 for 100 grams and more cashmere caverns so exact same base i got a t-shirt quantity of this which is called jeweled vixen and if you've seen this color on other bases it does look different so like uh i've said this before but the cashmere blends tend to take color a little bit differently on this one i think it it like actually was a little bit darker but then some of these spots like these purples are a little bit lighter but like some of these almost look like darker than the non-cashmere bases it's definitely more saturated than the non-super wash but it's more watercolory than the super wash like no cashmere blends that's where I put it right in the middle and it's such oh look at these colors oh my gosh oh they're so pretty I think that this is going to end up being a monochromed color tip tee um pattern by Emily Curtis, who is part of Pacific Knit West, um, but she's put a, cup, a couple of designs out over the last few years, and it's a t-shirt pattern that is a top-down um, inset sleeve. I don't even know what that's called. Like it, it's the it's not a drop shoulder. It's a it's a top-down t-shirt like crew neck that has you know it has true shoulder lines so that your sleeve is you know you you build a cap and then you make the rest of your sleeve um whatever that's called that's what it is and I have not made one I joined the group at the very end of the test knit actually and I thought about testing that one but I didn't have enough like single color on hand and I hadn't really thought to do a variegated so I'm really excited to get this one started this will also be a winter or early spring knit to be able to wear this kind of end of winter I feel like I could totally layer this it's like got enough saturation for for like wearing with a sweater um okay one more summer knit sorry for the crinkles but this is linen this is also Denali sock and then these are I think that these are Denali sock too um but you can see there is linen here and this was like the she put together these mini color packs like it's, you didn't choose your own minis right like that's how they came um but this was like the muted neutrals or the I don't know something she had like two two different kinds of um these packs and I am going to make a stripy turtle tank with this in hindsight like is this the very best like I probably should have got this color instead as the main but it's a tank top and it's going to mostly be these colors so I'm not really worried about it especially after actually making my staple tee, which has that like oatmeal color close to skin, like cl at my neckline. I was worried about that. Um, I'm not as much because that, it, it looks fine on me. It looks good. Um, it's not like my strongest color choice, but I'm okay with it. Um, anyway, I'm really excited for that. That's also an Emily Curtis pattern, the stripy turtle tank pictures, hopefully already went up where I put it here. Um, but it's got, so so many colors <laughs> and I'm not sure if I'll do like this order or a different order for them but yeah all the, all the colors across um with the linen as the edging and like and like the the main color in between two more so I told you this was the haul I got like this was my first big EKF purchase I never did a pre-order for her before um I did order for Spain but you guys will see those when they come not before um and this is Rocky's DK in the colorway Court of Dreams, which is one of her Aquatar colors. And I haven't really talked about it, but I love Aquatar like a lot. I'm going to die on that hill. I know some people have a lot of feelings about that series, but <sighs> I love Resand forever. 
that's all I have to say. Um, this is 100% superwash merino and it's 274 yards for 100 grams and it is like a lighter DK. You know, it's still a DK. Uh, it, Allie has said many times that she subs it just like whenever DK is in pattern, she, she subs it. Um, I am going to make a Brooklyn Raglan. I love my Brooklyn Raglan light so much that I decided I want it in the slightly heavier weight of this. I bet you could get away with, if you did a gauge swatch of Brooklyn Raglan, like the regular pattern with like almost a worsted, like a 220. Like I think you could get away with it. You would just have to possibly size down with a slightly bigger gauge. Um, but if you want to make it, I mean, it's one of my favorite patterns. I mean, the, the light was so fun to make. I love this color. I cannot get over it. And I thought this would be just enough variegation and like color change um, to be amazing in that pattern, which really highlights the yarn. I mean, it's like the best yarn show off pattern ever. Um, I find that that's kind of hard to find on Ravelry. There are so many people that make tonal sweaters. And like, I know you variegated people are out there. It's not just me who loves it. And I like find it a little bit harder. Like they're not often the featured pictures. So it's like a little harder to see if people are making beautiful variegated sweaters and what patterns they're loving. I know people like make the flax and other things. I'm going to try the Weekender variegated. I got that yarn from Backloop earlier, um, which I showed you guys. And this pattern I know shows off because of the broken seed stitch on the sleeve. You get like just enough fun. I think this actually, this sweater would be also really amazing for a variegated because you get so much color this way that is just featuring the color and doing, um, an opposite, like having at the top be like a totally opposite direction. I mean, there's so many, there's so many sweaters that would be great. It's just sometimes like if it has too much detail, then it gets lost. If it's totally plain, then I don't want to knit it. That's probably a little bit too boring for me. Maybe it's not. Maybe I should try a hundred percent stock in that sweater. I don't know that I've made one. Probably not. Um, but like, I want to make a dad sweater. And even that's also an Emily Curtis pattern. I want to make all her patterns. Uh, but the dad sweater is like definitely one where you could totally do a beautiful variegated and it would really pop in that. But that sweater to me screams like tweed or heather so much that I don't want to do it variegated. So like brain, you know, I don't know. That's just my thoughts on it. Did you also see that this cup has like this is fun, this fun side? so fun okay just because that's like almost cold now okay one more because and this is the one I really wanted to talk about um because I'm going to cast this on on Sunday so I think I said this last week that the the knit group and I decided we really wanted to make boucle sweaters boucle is like having its moment and I am jumping on the bandwagon. So I got this at the summer market because it was there and because like, oh my gosh, I've almost never seen a more perfect color for me. You like my dog hair there? Okay. Um, this is to the stars who listen, which is also an Akotar colorway uh, that she brought back for the summer market. So summer market featured, I didn't like finish the sentence about this, but anyway, um, she puts out new colors, like summer colors, like grapefruit. And there was a bunch of other ones. I don't even know the name of most of them. Um, but she also um, brought back some favorites from various colorways, like various collections, like some Italy colors were there, some Akatar colors were there, and like some National Park colors were there. Anyway, that's fun. Uh, this color is everything. It is, oh, it's so so I am making a superlative sweater by Samantha Guerin. Guerin? I don't know how to say her last name, so sorry about it. Um, if you know, give me the phonetic spelling below or a phonetic pronunciation below. Um, anyway, she has some very great patterns out. I have never made one from her before, so this will be a first. I actually just bought like one other she had a birthday sale and they're the salty air tea I really want to make. And so I bought that to make for a summer sweater next for summer tea, um, for next year. And, uh, yeah, anyway, so this pattern was released last week. 
Tori Yu. This is a Tori Yu episode, I guess. This is not related to her patterns though, but she tested it for Samantha actually. And she posted the most gorgeous, like really huntery green version of it with match, no stripes, which is like, that's how the pattern sample is. It has stripes in it. But Tori did no stripes, a little bit more cropped. And she did the same color cuffs, cuffs, neckline, hem. Um, and Sylvan, again, Yarny Godmother found, I don't have any of this color in any other weight. Um, and she found one extra skein of DK that she is going to let me buy from her. So I can have my version of the Tory version of the Samantha Gary pattern. Um, and I'm going to, luckily, Sylvan found this. I will get it from her next Tuesday, but I don't need it to start because you start with the boucle. And so I'm going to do a gauge swatch tonight, probably. Um, again, this is the next one I'm going to cast on, which is not going to be a desk project because boucle does not play that well. Maybe when I get to like the body for real and I'll get used to using it, it'll be okay. But you know, I don't know that I want to do that. Um, where did I put? Oh, Okay, now I'm so yellow, you guys. It's because it's really dark out now. So the, there's no natural light in here and it just doesn't know what to do with, with all that. Um, so extra EKF haul. Obviously I got some EKF at Flock. They're the diary I'm featuring even though they obviously have more than a thousand followers. Um, I will, I'm gonna forget some of them because I didn't like take a lot of notes, you guys. I was like in meetings all day long and just went right into filming. Um, I, there are some other dyers having a moment right now. It's everybody's fall release. So I would like to give a couple of shout outs. I mean, there's also all the fall patterns, but let's do dyers. So Mezzo Makes is doing a harvest collection. Beachy Breeze Sea Fibers. Is that her? Hold on. Her name is Sam, but yeah, Beachy Breeze. Ooh. Beachy Breeze Fibers, like, I got this one from her this summer, too, which, how good is that color? Ooh, so fun. Um, that was, like, a leftover sale. Anyway, um, she is having a really fun tweed. I think it's tweed only, which, pff, these are good colors. Um, so I'm going to be hopefully popping a couple of pictures from the gram up here. Um, Oh, Paisley Knits is doing her last two colorways this weekend, I think, or this week, and her collection goes live on next week. So I just asked her this question because I wasn't sure. I've not been following her for a super long time, um, but she is releasing like all of the colors on a single base right now so you can see what they all look like on the same base and her inspo photos, which if you haven't seen them are so from fun. They're from her trip to New Zealand. Um, I think she spent like quite a long time there. It wasn't like a week, right? Um, and she has like all these amazing, amazing colors. And um, I did ask her and she is going to do like the color, all the colors on all of the bases that are going to be available like next week. So I think these last colors come out and then she'll do all the base reveals, which is going to be great because I want to see them. I already know I'm going to buy something from her because she has this amazing cloud base, which Ariel brought to Knit Night so I could touch it because she had one skein of it. And it's, um, it's like a DK weight in, in length per hundred grams, but it's very fluffy. And, uh, Coley who runs Paisley Knits just finished her Dorney sweater, which is an Aaron weight sweater using that base. And I said, uh, it's what I need. It looks like a cloud. It looks like the most, most comfortable sweater ever. Um, anyway, so that's part of my purchasing plans. I don't know what color I'll get, so I'm going to wait to see. Um, the other dyers, oh, long dog. Brandy's pulling out all the stops with her Outlander collection. She gave a couple of her colors a glow up, uh, with this release. And I am like loving, especially the colors that just came out over the last two days, which I'll definitely pop up here. She got her teals out there. Oh, they're so nice. But also her like plummy colors that were in the beginning of the collection. The, the sequence that she puts them out in, it's just like everything. Like it's the, oh, it's so good. Like she's so thoughtful in her color creation and 
putting them out and all her inspo photos photos coming out too are so good um yeah so i'm like very excited let's see who else Oh, Capella Luna Fibers is doing a Pacific Northwest, like, tour the Pacific Northwest. Um, she just was releasing Seattle colors. I think she'll do at least Portland. She did Vancouver, Seattle, hopefully Portland's in there. I don't know if anyone else will make the cut or any other areas between Seattle and Portland. Um, colors are really fun so far. I really love a lot of the Vancouver colors. Again, you're going to get me with the blues and greens every time. Um, yeah. And if I forgot anybody, I will maybe just like pop up a name right here and the colors. I don't know. And I'll put them down below. So let's give our dyer some love in the comments for the giveaway. Don't forget. Um, please comment by next, like, Thursday, you know, 10 a.m. or something like that. I'll film. Right before I film, I will pull all the comments and do, like, the Google magic and for the number generator, etc. Um, and then, so I will announce it during next week's episode. But I, the cutoff is, like, 8 a.m. Pacific time, Thursday morning. Um, okay, let's talk very quickly about books, and then I gotta go because it's dinner time and... I gotta go hang out with my baby. Um, and I don't normally cut into my baby time with this, but I just had to get it done. It's been the longest day ever. Um, okay, I read several books this week. So I finished, um, I, th I think I already said I finished the Lucy Score book last week. And so I didn't have, um, I didn't know what I was gonna read for a Kindle book, but I did start a new one. But let me go back to, what did I finish? You guys, I got two, <laughs> I don't know if you noticed. I've been putting the book covers up here. I got two book names wrong last week, even though I had them written down. I like wrote them down incorrectly. Partly because when I'm like listening on my like Libby, it takes me one second to pick the book. I don't look at the title again. I don't have to like flip a book open or anything. And then it's usually over very quickly. And I, you know, my notes were not great. Um, so I read finished Something Wilder, which is the actual name of the book that I said just Wilder last week, um, by Christina Lauren, who again is two people. So fun. Fun facts. Um, this book was, it was so good. I think that it actually made me cry. I mean, it's very, it's a, it's a modern day romance, right? But they do really write with a little something extra. I mean, to me, it's like, I would give um, this book as a suggestion along with, you know, any M Emily Henry book. So if you like Emily Henry, this is a good one. Even if you don't like Emily Henry, I think these characters have a little bit more depth than even some of the Emily Henry characters. They She also does like a pretty good job with like something interesting. Like it's not just like, oh, it doesn't follow all of the normal tropes and neither do these. And they're, they, it was fun. It's a wild west kind of like modern wild west book. There were twists and turns. One I saw coming, one I did not see coming. And I thought it was so great. Uh, yeah, read it. I would suggest it. I totally like, it was a good, it was a good read. Um, and then I read, okay. <laughs> I read Love Theoretically by Allie Hazelwood. I have so many thoughts about this. I am going to share them. But let me just say, I got like six books from the library this week because I put things on hold. And like they all came at once. This just happened to be the first of like, I put things on hold months ago. And I'm not kidding you. I think six of them came up between like two days ago and today. And so um, I have many books that are going to be in the queue over the next two weeks that I've been waiting for. Most of them continuation and series. Um... So this one is the newest Allie Hazelwood, I think. And if you don't know who Allie Hazelwood, also a modern romance, contemporary romance writer, she writes um, always with a bent on the main protagonist female being a woman in STEM. Um, I think also just like most of the characters are in, in STEM, STEM being science, technology, you know. Um, it's I have so many thoughts about it because I want to really, really love them for highlighting women in STEM. 
I also want to love them because she really does talk about the the hardships of academia. No, I don't have a PhD. I don't even have a master's degree. But um, my husband worked in an academic lab for years. Um, he went back to school for, uh, you know, a master's in STEM. I have several good girlfriends who are women in STEM, who have PhDs, who did the whole, had to deal with all of this BS. Like it is a really still such a male dominated field. All of them, all of the fields in STEM are male dominated. Um, and it's academia like is real harsh. Um, and I think that she paints some of that well. I just think that she continues to write females that are book smart and big dummies. And while I think that that is valid and there are definitely those people in the world, like I don't want to root for them as much as I want to root for a woman in STEM. Like it makes me feel like bummed a little bit. Like, why did you have to go do that? Um, and also my other gripe with this always in all of her books is that she writes male characters like anomalies in STEM. Like they're gorgeous, emotionally competent and emotionally intelligent, tall, muscular men in STEM who are also thoughtfully in tune with the plight of women in STEM. I call bullshit. There is, okay, like, why do they have to be all of those things? Like, don't make a unicorn. I know that people write the unicorn kind of like, that's fun and interesting for a love interest. Like, but I feel like they never have enough of a flaw. Whereas like the women always have some huge, like being a big dummy kind of thing. It's like making your, talking about in a, in a gender inequality and intentionally doing that with your characters, like for no reason. Anyway, that's my thought on it. I still liked the story, unfortunately. I mean, I, they're still captivating. She's a good writer. I just think she makes odd choices for the like very specific niche that she is like trying to fill with empowerment. That's all I have to say about that. Um, okay, so what am I reading? I am reading the third, which I didn't even know this came out, but like popped up on my Kindle to read um, of the Lucy Score books. And this one is called Things We Left Behind. I'm actually, this one I'm very interested in because these are the two characters that like have been heavily featured in like a, this is going to be an enemies to lovers. And I'm okay with it. I knew it was coming. They also like have a lot of history and, and it's good so far. There's a lot of flashbacks, but like not in a preachy way. She's not like, oh, if only I'd known, you know, like she's really just having memories that she gets like stuck in for some, some parts. Um, and, and memories from his perspective too. So that's very interesting. Uh, I am reading Fair Isle and Fortunes by Nancy Warren because I can't stop <laughs> with these vampire knitting clubs. I mean, this one is like spring. It's not even like about the fall cozy vibes, but it's still Oxford, England, and I'm loving it. Um, and they're just so funny. I mean, like kooky little cozy mysteries. Uh, I am also reading, so I will have a slew of new books from some other like series that I'm very excited to read. Um, but I picked up a series that I paused on. So last year, almost exactly a year ago, um, when during Mike and I went on a trip for our wedding anniversary, uh, we actually went on a trip to go back to Pennsylvania to visit for some various other things. But we took a road trip up to Boston, spent the week in Boston for our, our wedding anniversary, like went and celebrated, did some things. Actually, we went to a Red Sox game on our anniversary and had burgers at Wahlburger. That was our anniversary dinner. <laughs> But then we went to a nice dinner the next night and like we did a lot of fun stuff. Um, but uh, during that road trip, we started reading The Wheel of Time. And that's a series, in case you don't know, that's like a like an epic fantasy. So it's like 14 books or something. And it's they're all gigantic books and they're 
is huge world building and there's a lot of things to like a lot of characters a lot of things going on and all these big consequences and very like good versus evil I love a series like that I've heard really good things I have a friend an old roommate I used to live with whose husband now you know like read all the books and got her into them and that was like her commute book for commuting books for like the whole time I think we lived together she was like slogging through this and it's it's really they're very big um so we read this book and we read like so much of it during this road trip and Mike likes to listen to them at one speed like 1x which is a normal person speed I like I can't I can't do it people pause too much it's just like very it annoys me I speak quickly I like to listen quickly I don't listen to these as fast as I listen to some other books but I listen to them at like at least 1.5 it's my preference people you can judge me if you want I don't really care um but that's how I read so much actually because I don't spend seven hours listening to like a Nancy Warren book I spend like three and a half those ones are at a high speed and they go 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 um so this one, I am, anyway, we took a long pause because Mike was like playing a video game. What we were used to do is like, he would play video games. I would knit, we would listen book, to a book at the same time. He was like playing a couple of video games where that was like not that conducive. And you have to focus on this book. So like a road trip was perfect because like you can kind of zone in on the book. Um, and then it was like on my Audible account. Anyway, long story short, I, we paused. We finally finished the first book when baby came and we had some time to kill while she was, you know, between naps and stuff, um, or during naps, I asked him the other week, like, Hey, can you decide if you really want to read the second one or if you're out for this series? Cause we should carve out time to listen to them or I'm going to move on by myself. And cause I've been thinking about them. I just like, I want to know what's going to happen. And he thought about it. I gave him a weekend to think about it. And he decided that he was going to skip. And if, if I thought it was like worthwhile to join in, he would either catch up to me on his own, or he would just start listening on his own and we could talk about it, you know, and I would be just like done, which I think seems fair. Um, I mean, this is many months later, like seven months or something. I gave it a break and then, and it took us like four months to read one book. So that's too long. Uh, yeah. So I started reading that and I am almost done the second book and it is a lot. There's so much going on. Um, so like the very short synopsis I'll give of these books is that there is, um, there is a group of teens, early twenties, youths, youths, <laughs> uh, young adults from a village in the middle of nowhere that get pulled into the biggest intrigue in the world and battle good versus evil. They make very silly decisions. They grow up a whole lot during this series. Um, there's some magic, there's um, some mystical creatures, there is a lot of political intrigue. Um, and yeah, I mean, like, there's a lot of finding themselves too. So I have been really enjoying them. And um, a couple other girls in the knit group have read them. And yeah, we, I'm, I know it's like worth this. It's worth it. It's worth the, the long journey there. Uh, this weekend, this is just in other news. Um, I don't have anything to share for knitting opinions this week. I'd love, if you guys have anything you want me to cover, I will. I've got some other things like in a short list to talk about in the near future, but this is far long enough at this point. Um, but this weekend, I just want to tell you guys, I will post my stories, I'm sure, but Ariel, Katie, and I are all traveling over to Bainbridge Island to take a spinning class at La Mercerie. Um, I think Ariel said this on her podcast last week, but I swooped in and grabbed all the class tickets so it's a really small class um Maya who works at La Mercerie is going to be teaching us to spin on a treadle wheel um so Ariel's been spinning a lot if you haven't watched her podcast like I don't even know how she's so good at it already but she's using an e-spinner and she wanted to like learn the treadle um spinning and 
Katie also got an e-spinner and she also was like, let's, let's try it as a different thing. I have not done any e-spinning. So like in levels of preparation, I'm at the very bottom here. <laughs> I have no idea. Um, I don't know how to do any part of it. I haven't like done any drafting. I, I don't know anything. Um, so Maya's going to have her work cut out for her teaching three different skill levels, but it's a pretty short class. We do it over two weekends and we get to borrow wheels and actually like spin during the week next week. So I'm so excited. Uh, and then the Pacific, the Pacific Knit West group is going to go because again, we're friends that knit together. Um, we're doing a little, our own retreat, like just us. See, five of us, uh, only five of us are going. Um, and we're going to like to actually take a little trip up to Bellingham in a couple of weeks. And we are going to test out more wheels, uh, which you can test out. There's a store up there, which I'll put the name of. I keep like totally evading me this very second. Um, but maybe we'll come home with wheels because we'll have tried them and we will know for ourselves whether or not we want them. But uh, that is like the new exciting thing. I am a little nervous to get into spinning because knitting already takes so much time and like I have a lot of yarn but I there are times when like it'd be nice to do something I think you slow down a little bit more for it's also likely going to be a lower pressure thing because if I was spinning it'd be like single skeins of a lot of colors like to use in the hats or mittens or something that like no deadline for and you know, all of that. And I think it's another thing. It's nice to kind of like learn the process and learn more about like the yarn and how it comes to be like this. I mean, obviously it's different. All Most of this stuff is mill, uh, mill spun. And it, so it is different. Consistency is different, but, um, it's still like the logistics. It's like the basics of how it becomes a thing to use. And I would love to learn that. Um, I know drop spindle is like a much cheaper way to get into it, but, um, I know myself and I think this tactile piece of like using your feet, setting your own rhythm is going to be what I enjoy. Um, I will though after this also try Ariel or Katie's e-spinner over the next like couple of weeks just to see if like maybe I don't want to invest right now and that's what I want to do but I do want to spin some yarn. Um, so more to come I'll tell you all about it next week because I will be like dead in the middle of my first and only <laughs> week with a spinning wheel in my house. Um, so yeah, that's all for today, everybody. Thanks for joining me. Um, don't forget, if you didn't make a comment, please comment below. Uh, yeah, you have until 8, 8 a.m. Pacific time, Thursday, the whatever day it is. I don't know, the, the 6th or the 5th um, So of, of October. So I'm very um, glad for all of you to join me. If you also want to comment, I mean, like, let's keep other conversations going. If you want to comment what you're making, what you were knitting on, tell me of any fun and cozy books. Um, by the way, I'm not going to talk about it right now, but a couple of people have told me to read Knitting in the City, which I already read. Um, I don't know if I really talked about that at all on here before, but like I got a couple of comments. So um, I can talk about that series itself at some point in the future. And yeah, so like tell me all your cozy things. It's so rainy here. It's so ready for fall. Um, I hope that you guys are making fun projects and that I got to keep you company. And I hope that you write a comment and share some love to our small dyers. Um, follow the ones that you see after actually I will probably compile a list because I'm sure there'll be some duplicates and that's okay um I will compile a list of the ones that everybody shared and put that somewhere maybe on Instagram probably just on my Instagram page um after the giveaway is over so you guys can go just go there and love everybody um yeah and if you're a dyer and you want to put yourself in there, please do. This is no, no shade. Self-promotion also. Um, I will talk to all of you next week. Have a super, super great uh, week, weekend, day that you are having. Um, and I hope you got to knit something fun and cozy. Bye.